I'm Joseph and today we're here, it's a beautiful morning, we're here on our cherry farm in central Portugal. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful morning, like I say, the sun is coming through the clouds, but they are giving rain this afternoon. So me and my, th me and my father, we thought we'd, uh, we'd take advantage of the, uh, of the dry weather this morning and get all of our tolls, all of our olive nets, wrapped up, stuck back in the barn for another year, and yeah, and then we'll see them next olive season. We had a, uh, we had a really nice olive season this year. It was, it was really, really nice, actually. We, um, we got two uh, pickup trucks, two Bedford pickup trucks, full to the brim of, uh, of olives, plus another um, 260 something kilos uh, from down here in this smaller olive grove. So, um, so yeah, about, about 2,000, 2,200 kilos we got this year, which was uh, quite, a, quite a good harvest for us. Uh, it's the best harvest we've had here on the farm because we've only just bought that, uh, that land up the top there, which is where we got the, uh, the, the, the pickup truck fulls of, um, of olives. So, so, it's our, so it's our best year we've had on the farm here. But yeah, so we're really looking forward to getting the, um, the olive oil. That's gonna come through in about sort of mid-January, so another, th another few weeks, and uh, then we'll pick that up from the, uh, from the cooperativa, the olive press. And uh, yeah, but for now, let's take advantage of that, of that dry weather. Let's get those, uh, those nets wrapped up. Okay, that's all the nets folded up. The, uh, the sun's disappeared away behind the clouds now, so my prediction on the rain could be true, unfortunately. And uh, <laughs> all the sheep are watching us, they're there. Must be better than television for them. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we've, uh, we've finished all the nets now and uh, they're all gonna go put away for the, uh, put away in, in the, uh, in the storeroom for the year, and uh, right here we've got some um, we've got some big logs from uh, from when we've done some cherry pruning, um, and they've been uh, they've been covered with a tarp and everything. They're not they're not completely seasoned yet, but um, we thought maybe it might be a good idea now before the rain comes, get them all cut up and move them down into um, into the uh, the underneath section of the house where we where we uh, store all our stuff. So um, so that would probably be a good idea. So we've got all this wood here, all of this all of this wood here needs uh, needs cutting into smaller pieces. And then we've got a lot of smaller, smaller sections of wood there that uh, that we're going to move that we're going to move with the tractor back down to the uh, to the storeroom. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so we've uh, we've got all of that all of that wood chopped up now, and uh, I didn't film too much of it because I was a trying to trying to beat this this wet weather that's supposed to be coming this afternoon, and uh, and b I wanted to concentrate on not taking any of my fingers off. Uh, 
I was going to say we have Godfrey behind me here, but he's just he's just run down the hill. I think we had Godfrey behind me here, and he was he was thrashing about fighting with this oak tree. I don't know what he was doing, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now we've uh, we've started ferrying down all of the logs down to uh, down to the the storage underneath the house. They'll uh, they'll stay there for a little while longer. They'll season and make make sure they're out of the uh, out of the wet weather so it doesn't spoil them. And um, and yeah, then. I think we're going to go down now and see if we can if we can do some some more autumn jobs and and get anything anything that needs doing done before the uh, before the rain comes. And yeah, then um yeah, we'll take it from there. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Maybe some leaf blowing or something like that. Let's go take a look. Okay, so we've finished the uh, finished the leaf blowing now. And me and Dad, we're down at the uh, the chicken and the duck enclosures. Um, yeah, as you can probably hear from all of the uh, the squabbling going on behind me here. <laughs> hey, geese! And uh, yeah, we have some very flighty feathered friends on the farm here. We've got our, our ducks and our chickens and our geese and everything. And um, yeah, once a year. Their, uh, their their feathers all grow back in. They have a uh, they have a molt once a season, and uh, it's normally when the weather starts to cool down, so about autumn sort of time, going into early winter, and um, then yeah, they they they've grown all new feathers all throughout their body. And uh, this is this is the reason why a lot of uh, battery hens, when people rescue them, they tend to uh, they tend to bounce back very quickly, and they look like uh, look like a picture of health only after a, a few a couple of a couple of months of living the good life. And uh, yeah, this is because they've grown all of their new feathers in, and um, yeah, they've had a chance to actually grow their feathers and not be not be pecked at by other birds and things like this. And uh, yeah, so that means that uh, once a year we do, how however, have the job of having to uh, to clip the, uh, the the wing tips on uh, on some of our birds because um, some of them they can get a little bit flighty. And uh, as I'm sure most of you know, we uh, we have a bit of a, a problem with our neighbours' dogs. There, uh, <laughs> they like to they like to wander the streets occasionally. So if my if my ducks feel like going to the pond and they pick their <laughs> and they uh, they open their wings and start flapping around. A big gust of wind can come, like you heard a minute ago, and it can send the uh, it can send the the chicken or the duck going straight over the fence and into the uh, into the path of the hungry dogs waiting for them. So so it is a good a good idea to do this if um, if you've got chicken coops where where you think they might be able to fly out of or something like that. Not every bird can. The fences are quite high. They're they're relatively high. But um, but yeah, of course, some birds are a bit lighter than others, or or have have maybe longer wings, or, or maybe. Uh, a, a bit more of a daring attitude and they tend to take a trip over the fence every now and again but yeah <laughs> so we're going to uh, clip the clip the ends of the primary the primary wing feathers and uh, this doesn't hurt them it's just like having a haircut for us or, or clipping our nails or something like that and um, what I do here on the farm I'll show you in a minute when we're doing it but what I do is I um, I always do the uh, the left wing on every bird so that means that I can quickly see if I'm looking into the pasture I can quickly see a few months later if I've done it or not because I know straight away it's the left wing and the reason that I only do one wing is because um, if you do both wings they'll still fly in a direct path but um, but but get less air time of course if you only do the one wing it means that um, that they won't go in a direct path they'll they'll curve round they'll rotate to the left and because uh, that's the shorter wing so they'll rotate to the left and uh, it means that they probably won't end up going over the fence but um, but yeah doesn't hurt them so um, so yeah let's crack on with uh, clipping a few wing feathers So 
so it's uh, it's it's later on in the day now and all of the uh, all of the birds are thinking about going back to bed uh, it's not very late however when it gets to this time of year of course it gets dark relatively early and the sun is just sort of going down now it's still not down but the chickens they uh, they have a, a built-in clock in their heads and they know exactly when it's when it's time to get away from the foxes and get into the bed at night so um so it's a nice ideal time where we can walk into the coop they're very used to us walking in the coop so there's no distress calls to them whatever and uh, we pick them up not all the time but every now and again whenever they need checking over or anything so they're really uh, they're really quite quite used to it with us now and uh, yeah dad's dad's just got one here it's sitting it was sitting on the on the perch in the coop ready to go to bed and we're gonna quickly snip the snip the wingtips and then um, and then yeah set her back on the perch ready for bed for the night Okay, so this bird we've got here is called Polly Brown. It's, uh, it's an Americana that we bred out here on the farm. We've got quite a few. And Dad, because I'm holding the camera, if you can hold her wing out then, <laughs> normally I do it and Dad just holds the birds. Uh, hold it out just a little bit more. That's it, perfect. And we'll just, without getting Dad's fingers, just take those primary wing tips off. And then on the left wing, and then yeah, and then she can go back on her perch and, and yeah, we'll get the next one. Okay, it's getting uh, it's getting a bit darker now. We've uh, we've finished mostly all of the chickens now. Certainly the ones that go to bed slightly on the earlier side of the evening. Uh, there's still a handful around. You can probably see some of them behind me here. Still about maybe maybe ten to go. I think something like that. Five between five and ten, something like that. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's getting dark. Uh, my fingers are getting chilly. I'm gonna wait for these uh, wait for these birds to go to bed and then uh, and then clip their wings as soon as they do uh, but yeah I'll uh, I'll leave it there and um, I think uh, I'll see you again tomorrow when uh, when I pick the cameras back up and uh, do uh, do a spot of cooking or something maybe some lunchtime cooking okay we're now back in the kitchen and today I'm cooking a uh, relatively simple dish uh, but it's got anything from a simple backstory it's got uh, it's got a, a quite a sad story in actual fact the the history of this uh, of this sausage that I'm going to be cooking today is uh, is yeah one that I really would recommend you you go go back after this video and and have a little read up about this this uh, this uh, this sausage it really is a very interesting story although albeit quite a quite a sad one um, this sausage uh, the Alieda de Mirandela or the Alieda it, uh, it dates back to the uh, the Spanish Inquisition and uh, this sausage may be responsible or, or is responsible for saving thousands of lives when there was the Crusades going on in Lisbon and other areas of Portugal during the Spanish Inquisition, um, the, the Jews were being persecuted, uh, unfortunately, and um, of course, uh, Jews back then they 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 didn't eat they didn't eat pork, and um, they could be they could be uh, spotted quite quite easily through the lack of of pork sausages hanging in the smokeries out the back of their houses. So um, so the Jewish community they um, they created these uh, these alieras and they are um, they're a sausage that that is stuffed with uh, breadcrumbs and uh, and different ingredients some game meat some poultry and things like that um, and that is that is to con conceal the fact that they uh, that they of course were not eating pork and uh, it's because of these sausages hanging in their in their smokeries that an awful lot of lives would definitely have been saved. So today the dish on the menu is going to be. Alieda de Mirandela. This is a um, this is a, a game version because I don't eat poultry that's not from my own farm. So this one is going to be um, a wild boar and venison uh, game sausage with uh, some spinach. Uh, we've got here some lovely creamy fresh uh, ricotta cheese. We've got some salt. We've got some lovely uh, spicy peppers. Some uh, some garlic cloves there. Some balsamic vinegar. And yeah, let's go.
Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, now I talk I'm sorry. I know we are videos, but Chloe is nearly three weeks and we are bounding together uh -huh. and she starts so smart looking around and she starts crying now. <laughs> oh. She certainly discovered her lungs in the last three weeks, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> What have you what have you been up to, Mariana, while you've not been on screen? <laughs> now we start and we in our lounge now. I read for her. We're watching some kids' movies, music for kids, for she learn. Yeah. And everything for she and she love it. She's so good, she's quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we've just been sitting around in the lounge pretty much, well, more Mariana than me of course, I've been out on the farm, but um, but yeah, I light the fire for them in the morning and uh, yeah, Mariana spends a lot of her days reading books and whatnot in our lounge here, yeah. but yeah, we've got the Christmas tree up now, it's, um, it's fast approaching the holiday season now, and yeah. We've um, we've done quite a bit again this week. We've we finished our olive harvest now, of course, as I was saying earlier. And uh, yeah, that was a really 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 good season. Uh, we were we were blessed to have a, a fantastic olive olive season this year, weren't we? And um, yeah, it's been made all the better, of course, with uh, with our addition of our our new little new little farm hand here with uh, with Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> And um, yeah, what else have we done this week? We've um, yeah, we've folded up all of the sheets and um, and prepared to, uh, to to pack everything away for the year. We'll see them again next year on on next year's harvest. And um, yeah, we've uh, we've made the lovely alieira. Um We've clipped all of the uh, all of the chickens' wings. Um, it really is a necessity if we want to have them uh, free range. We could of course pen them in with a with a roofed enclosure, but I'd, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather have them out on the field. But if I don't clip their wings, that means they can they can leap the fence and uh, yeah enter the path of our neighbours' dogs and. That's not, not probably the, the best outcome for them, but yeah, <laughs> so we've had a, a lovely week. It really has been a lovely week. Thank you all so much for watching. I know I say it every week, but thank you very much to our lovely Patreons. It really is because of you guys that we can continue to make this content. And um, yeah, I hope you all have an absolutely amazing week. Um, yeah, add me, on, add me on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.